we are in for a fun treat with this project because we are going to be doing some steaking. Now, if you've never done steaking before, what it is is we're going to set up our fabric and then we are going to cut it. Now, why are we going to cut it? Because we want it flat and these stitches to look this good can only be worked in the round. So if we can cut our fabric, then we can have an opening so that we can create something like this. In order to create this fabric, we will be working it in the round and then down one side, we're going to have some set up chain stitches that we are going to cut and don't worry, secure our edges. And that way we can create flat fabric. So this is really an exploration and being able to use these stitches flat, which implies we'll be able to do some other fun projects down the road. This is using a really fun stitch pattern. Um, for this, for this one, I used size four millimeters so the g hook the dishy worsted weight yarn you'll also need some scissors a tapestry needle to weave in those ends and a stitch marker and then of course you're looking at these really cool clutch um, metal things wondering where you get them i found these on amazon now if you want to do this project where you're simply making it in the round and it's almost like a sleeve with the top opening because you can adjust the size quite easily if you wanted to make say just a sleeve for a tablet or a cell phone or something like that you don't have to steak it you don't have to do this you would simply be skipping those first four stitches in the pattern where we add some chains and just working it continuously like we did on the journey under the sea bag but the purpose of this is i'm hoping you will jump in especially because it's a smaller project so it might feel a little bit less risky to you in order to make this as a flat piece that could be used for something else I will be linking these in the description of this and in the pattern. Um, it's really fun. It's set up to be able to stitch on here quite easily. It does also help to secure the edges and it's, it's a really fun project. I am going to be making it in this size and this size. It's really easy to adjust this um, stitch repeat by six stitches and then adjusting the length. You just keep adding um, however many rows you need to make it as long as it needs to be. Also for this fabric, because it has such an aggressive lean to it, which I know it doesn't look like it here because I've blocked that lean out. Um, it is important if you have one mat and some blocking pins. Now these, these pins I do love, I do recommend them, but you can simply have individual pins as well um, that are really inexpensive. So I do highly advise, normally I say, you know what, you can get away with using an, an aggressive wet block just on a towel. I think for this one, it's gonna be a bit harder. We are really working this fabric through a block so that it has less of a lean to it. Now, in order to attach this fabric to this metal piece, we will need a sewing needle and thread. The reason why is because we can't really get our yarn through these holes, but we can with some sewing thread. And it also helps reinforce and secure those edges of this fabric now what i really think is cool about this is when i make this larger size this is the one i'm really after this was um, my first attempt at this went really well i'm really really happy with it is when we make this larger size we should be able to put our cell phone inside of it which will be really nice it's a nicer way to carry your cell phone to an event by simply sliding it inside of a really pretty clutch and that way um, it just is very stylish. And if you wanna take your cell phone with you, you can do it more discreetly. So I'm excited for this larger size. I'll be using this color here. It's a really, really nice color. This one is called Inlet. Um, I've used it for some other things too. So it's a nice one to use. So grab your yarn, grab your tools. This is going to be a really fun project. Now for this size, I started with chaining 34. For a little bit larger, I'm going to chain 40. And this can be done in multiples of six plus four. Those four stitches are your steaking stitches. So if you do not want to steak this and you just wanna make this tighter fabric as a sleeve, you can just simply subtract four stitches off that beginning chain and then only do what's in the asterisk repeat. Don't worry about the before or the after those asterisks. Um, I just want to give you that option in case you're too scared to steak this, but you do like this fabric. But as you follow along, I think steaking it will feel less scary. 
So I'm going to start by creating a slip knot, placing that onto my hook, and then I'm going to be chaining 40 stitches. So now that I've chained 40, we are simply going to be working in the round continuously. So we're not going to be joining. We're just going to be working in the round continuously. So I'm going to start in this very first chain I did, and I'm going to create a single crochet stitch. And then I'm going to chain two, skip the next two chains, and single crochet in the remaining stitches around. So after doing that, those first stitches where we're setting up for where we will be sticking, we are creating these chains where we're going to be sticking later, we can go ahead and simply single crochet in the rest around. Now remember if you have seen this from previous videos, I don't, I know this is a bit redundant, but I don't want to forget to say this, that when you are working split single crochet stitches, which we will start working on the next round, we'll be working into the center of that V. And when we're working into the center of that V, we don't want to create the stitches we're currently doing too tight so that it is difficult for us to get into that V. So be sure when you enter your stitches, and you yarn over and pull up a loop, pull it up a bit higher than you normally would. We really want that V space to have enough space for us to work with on the next round. Now, whenever we're working in the round, there will be a bit of a jog between the starting of the round and the end of the round because of the way that it's worked. But don't fret about that. We're going to use this tail end to kind of even it out when we weave it in later. But for now, we're just going to keep on going. So we are going to start row one of our repeat. We're going to start by doing a split single crochet into the very first stitch. Chaining two and then split single crochet into the next. And now that we've got the beginning of the round out of the way, from here on out, it's going to be a repeat. We're going to chain one, single crochet into the, split single crochet into the next. We'll be working split single crochets from here on out. Then we're going to skip the next stitch and split single crochet four. So once again, the repeat will be to chain one, split single crochet into the next stitch, skip the next stitch, and split single crochet into each of the next four stitches. And that's our repeat all the way around. Now for round two, we will be working the first stitch as a split single crochet, chaining two, skipping the chain spaces, and then split single crochet into the next. And now this next part is going to be our repeat. We are going to chain one, then we are going to do a single crochet in the chain one space from the row below, then a split single crochet into the next, and then we will skip the next and work each of the next three as a split single crochet. So that repeat for round two again is to chain one, do a single crochet in the chain space from the row below, split single crochet into the next, skip one, split single crochet into each of the next three, and that's the stitch repeat for round two, and you'll complete that all the way around. So now for round three, and you can use a stitch marker at the beginning of each round so you don't lose your space, this one where I know my first stitch is just to the right of these chain spaces, I'm okay without one, but it's always a good idea to use a stitch marker the first time trying a stitch or if you um, get off on your stitch count so you know what you're doing. So for round three, we're going to do a split single crochet into the first, chain two, skip the chain spaces, and do a split single crochet into the next. Now we will be doing a chain one, single crochet into the chain space, split single crochet into each of the next two stitches, skip the next and split single crochet into two, the next two. So that's our repeat for round three. So that once again is a chain one, single crochet in the chain space from the row below, 
Split single crochet into each of the next two stitches. Skip the next stitch and split, so split single crochet into each of the next two stitches. And that is our repeat around for round three. And now for round four, we're going to start by doing a split single crochet into the first, chaining two and skipping the next two chains, and then split single crocheting. And then here's our repeat. Chain one and single crochet in the chain one from the round below. Split single crochet into each of the next three stitches. Skip the next stitch and split single crochet one. One more time, we're going to chain one and split single crochet and single crochet in the chain one space. Split single crochet into each of the next three stitches. Then we will skip one and split single crochet in the next. And that's our repeat around for round four. And now for round five, we're going to start by doing a split single crochet, chaining two, skipping the chain stitches and split single crochet, chain one, single crochet in the chain one space from the round below. And then we are going to work four split single crochets in a row. And then we're going to skip this next stitch and go right back into our repeat. So chain one, single crochet in the chain space from the round below, and then split single crochet in four stitches. This is our repeat around for round five. And now rounds one through five are the repeat, but I wanna show you round one again when we're doing it with these stitches already established. So now at the end of round five, we're ready to go back and work round one again. And I'm skipping this last stitch in round five. So that stitch is skipped. And now we're starting round one again, where we start with a split single crochet. Then we're going to chain two and skip two chains split single crochet. And this is where we can start to see how aggressively this fabric leans. And that's why we'll really need to do um, an aggressive block for this one. Now for our repeat for round one, when we're doing this after round five, we're going to chain one, single crochet in the chain one space from the round below, skip one, and split single crochet into each of the next four. So that's chain one, single crochet in the chain one space from the round below, skip the next stitch and split single crochet into each of the next four. And that's how you do round one after completing round five. Now from here on out, you're just gonna be completing rounds one through five until you get the amount of fabric that you want for your device or if you're just keeping this in the round um do you make it as long as you want for whatever you're making because you really can make this as wide and as long as you want so i'm going to keep doing all of these until i get this fabric made all the way up to this point it's going to become the length that i want so right now it's the width that i want but we want it to be the length that we want. So I'm gonna keep repeating rounds one through five. And I think the best way to do this is really just to hold it up to whatever you're working with to make sure it's the proper length. So now that I have worked the repeats to get the length that I want for the, the um, hardware that I'm using, it is time for us to reinforce some stitches before cutting. We can already see that we this fabric has quite the lean to it, but it's okay because we are going to do some aggressive blocking with this. So after doing these repeats, I am at the end of my round, and then the next stitch is the first stitch of the next round. We are going to be working all the way down the first stitch of each round down this fabric. The reason why is we want to reinforce on each side of this before we get to cutting those chain spaces. So in order to work down this, you can do it in a couple ways. You could grab your sewing needle and thread and you could really tightly stitch down this. That would be just fine for this project. You could stitch down the center of those with the needle and thread to sew it in place. Or you can take your crochet hook and we're going to insert right down the center of this first stitch, yarn over from underneath this fabric, pull up and do a slip stitch, bring it through. And then we would just go to the next stitch, grabbing the yarn from underneath, 
pull it up and pull it through the loop on the hook. So this is just doing a surface slip stitch essentially down our fabric so that it reinforces the stitch so when we cut we don't have to panic about things just unraveling at all. The way that steaking works is we're not cutting across this way. We're going to be cutting this way and we've made space for us to do that and we're locking in our stitches here. So it's not as scary as you think. Things aren't just going to explode and unravel on us. So here we go. I'm going to do this all the way down. It gets a little bit tricky the farther you work down because you are working this, um, your, your leading yarn inside here. And so it does take a, a little bit of finagling to feel that um, thread underneath where you can't really see it to pull it up and bring it through. But I'm going to do this all the way down to reinforce those stitches. Now I want to give you some tips because I can appreciate how when you get about halfway here, it gets really difficult to continue to slip stitch through these. It's just hard to find that yarn on the backside. So sometimes I'll rotate and go down some hook sizes. Sometimes using a smaller hook, it's just easier to get through those stitches and grab that yarn on the back. But I have stopped working from this way and I've rotated and now I'm working towards this other side, just simply pulling and pulling my yarn all the way through here. And grabbing it out the other side. It does take a little bit of finagling to do these surface slip stitches, but they are well worth it. The other option you could do, I just want to mention, is you can cut this fabric before, like, you don't have to do these slip stitches. Another option is to cut this fabric and take it to your sewing machine and then stitch down each side after you've cut. So now that I have worked all the way down these stitches, I want to go through. This last little spot here. I want to make sure that I'm getting that, that edge done nice and tight. And then I'm going to do one last slip stitch, almost like a chain on that edge. I want to go over the fabric here. And then I can go ahead and pull this out and fasten off. I'm going to weave in this end in just a minute, but I want to pull this out so we can see here. It's not really that noticeable what we just did doing those slip stitches down this side, but it's important so that we don't panic when we cut it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn here and I'm going to need to do this along the other side as well. So we're going to do that one more time. We're going to do it on the other side of the chain two stitches. We're going to go ahead and join our yarn, join it with a chain. So we've got that locked in on that edge. And then I'm going to go right down the center of those stitches those split single crochets go right down the center of that V slip stitching all the way down on this side as well. So now that I've made it to the end here, I'm going to fasten off this side as well and then pull my yarn back out of there. And before we get, grab our scissors, because we have some ends to weave in, we will want to do that now. We don't want to wait on that because if we're bringing scissors in here and we're just cutting, we don't want to accidentally cut one of these and then we no longer have a long enough end to weave in. So let's go ahead, take a moment and secure those ends. All right, it is time for the main event, which we've all been waiting for, which does feel slightly heart attack inducing, but don't worry, this is not as scary as it seems. We are going to take our scissors and we are going to cut right down this line. We are only going to be cutting in those chain spaces right down the center of it, nothing else. We will only want to cut in those chains. This is fun to do. If you're panicking right now, please don't. And if you want to film it and then tag me at Brianna K Designs on social media, there is something gratifying about being able to do this. We don't see it as often in the crochet world. So I think it's really super fun to see this done. So yes, we are simply going to cut right down that center. And now we can set our scissors aside and we can open this up to be a flat fabric. So 
Saga, what we have here is a very aggressive lean happening. Obviously, we, we place this on our board and we can see, I mean, basically from math class, this is not the square we want. This is obviously a different shape. So we want to line this up on a board and we are going to aggressively block this. Now to do a more aggressive block, you will need water. I'm going to spray the back of this. Then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to spray the front. When it is wet, it is a little bit easier to shift and move the stitches. So now the next thing we're going to do is I like to start from one corner. So I'm going to be lining up the bottom here to see how wide I want this to be able to block. Starting with just a few pins, you're going to block that corner, pulling it straight. I like to do it on both sides. And you may have to readjust your pins as you go here. And now I'm going to go along that line. We want to go along that line here. And I'm going to block this other corner. We want to keep this side straight, so we'll want to go ahead and throw in pins there. And now it's just working the fabric little by little, blocking top and bottom across here. I find that's the easiest way to do it. I'm really going to pull this top up which will help bring up the bottom here. And then I'm gonna place one in the bottom. So we can already see where this is starting to get a little bit better. So I'm just gonna do that all the way across. Just following those lines. Now notice when I get to the bottom here, I have a lot of extra fabric. This is where now I can take out the bottom since the rest is a bit better at where it needs to be. And now I can readjust that bottom again, kind of shifting that fabric in there if needed to now line up that bottom a bit more even so that it is a square. Readjusting is something I've had to to learn to do in blocking is sometimes if you start and it worked and then it doesn't work, you can take out pins and readjust. So now our fabric is square. The next step is to wait. I'm going to put this underneath a fan. Um, this is a thicker yarn. This is a cotton yarn. Sometimes I'll spray the edges really good, spray it a couple more times, but this may take a day to dry because cotton yarn can really hold that water and it's going to take longer. You may want to halfway through, if it's not drying quickly, unpin, kind of air it out, and then pin it back. But this is going to be gorgeous once it dries. So after cutting, we have this gorgeous piece of fabric. Notice I'm not shy about moving it around. It's not going to come apart. We are totally fine. It is okay. Um, but you will notice on these sides, you might be able to pull out some of these chain stitches that were cut. And that is okay. You can go ahead and kind of tug at the edges a bit, pulling out those extra strands that we don't need. Um, but our fabric is really locked in and ready for some blocking. So now what we have here is a very aggressive lean happening. Obviously, we, we place this on our board and we can see, I mean, basically from math class, this is not the square we want. This is obviously a different shape. So we want to line this up on a board and we are going to aggressively block this. Now to do a more aggressive block, you will need water. I'm going to spray the back of this. Then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to spray the front. 
when it is wet, it is a little bit easier to shift and move the stitches. So now the next thing we're going to do is I like to start from one corner. So I'm going to be lining up the bottom here to see how wide I want this to be able to block. Starting with just a few pins, you're going to block that corner, pulling it straight. I like to do it on both sides. And you may have to readjust your pins as you go here. And now I'm going to go along that line. We want to go along that line here and I'm going to block this other corner. We want to keep this side straight, so we'll want to go ahead and throw in pins there. And now it's just working the fabric little by little, blocking top and bottom across here. I find that's the easiest way to do it. I'm really going to pull this top up which will help bring up the bottom here. And then I'm going to place one in the bottom. So we can already see where this is starting to get a little bit better. So I'm just going to do that all the way across. Just following those lines. Now notice when I get to the bottom here, I have a lot of extra fabric. This is where now I can take out the bottom since the rest is a bit better at where it needs to be. And now I can readjust that bottom again, kind of shifting that fabric in there if needed to now line up that bottom a bit more even so that it is a square. Readjusting is something I've had to to learn to do in blocking is sometimes if you start and it worked and then it doesn't work, you can take out pins and readjust. So now our fabric is square. The next step is to wait. I'm going to put this underneath a fan. Um, this is a thicker yarn. This is a cotton yarn. Sometimes I'll spray the edges really good, spray it a couple more times, but this may take a day to dry because cotton yarn can really hold that water and it's going to take longer. You may want to halfway through, if it's not drying quickly, unpin, kind of air it out, and then pin it back. But this is going to be gorgeous once it dries. So my sample seems pretty dry. I probably could let it sit a bit longer. I'm just really super excited to see this come together and to show you. So I'm going to take it off of this mat. So now after blocking this, our lean is almost gone. We have a square now and it's no longer having that really, really sharp lean. So now it's time for us to grab our needle and thread. We're going to get really friendly with our sewing thread and our sewing needle. And we're going to be placing this onto this metal piece. Now we have these edges that yes, if you want to trim these down, you can, it does make it a little bit easier. They're not really going to do anything or go anywhere, but this fabric is going to sit right inside on this piece. There's this groove here and we are going to insert our fam fabric into that groove as much as possible. Now the way that this works is we are going to take this fabric and I haven't um, done this seam along the bottom yet because I do find this is easier to do after because it's much easier to work with an open face fabric when you're doing the stitching. I've gone ahead and I've attached my strand to the bottom of my fabric here and I've lined it up. I'm looking to make sure that these top stitches can be sewn inside that groove. Sometimes it helps to set it kind of over it. We're going to be going inside that groove but if we set it over the top we'll know about where to start. Then we can go ahead and pull our fabric into that groove with our needle and thread.
Got a long strand here. I tend to like to work with long strands. I don't know if I should. Sometimes it makes it a bit harder, but I don't like to have to keep loading more thread. So I really want this to go in that groove. I'm going to really work this into that groove right there before I go down the next hole and into my fabric and out the back. And then I like to loop through two to three times for every single hole. And when I grab my fabric from the side, I'll kind of grab it from out here, which helps me shove it into that groove when I bring my needle up this first hole for a second time. And I like to give it a bit of a tug. I really want to secure the fabric to this metal as well as helping to secure that edge that we um, cut. So this is another way of reinforcing the edge by using this is we're not only attaching it to here, but we are reinforcing some stitches along our cut edge to ensure that that will never unravel for us. So now when I insert my needle, I am inserting it from the back to the front to about, I'm trying to get almost to the center of the stitches that we use to reinforce, still leaving a nice straight line on this outside here. And I'm gonna keep working up this entire thing. Now, I am not a friend of sewing. It is not my favorite thing to do. So I hear you right now, if you're looking at this going, well, that's gonna take some time. I'm not gonna lie, it is, because we're hand sewing, which is much slower than using a sewing machine. And we're also attaching it to this metal. So it's a little bit different than what we're used to. When I um, do it, I tend to work with this open because it makes it a little bit easier. And any of these little frays there, when you're working this, you can try to catch them and bring them in or just simply clip them. They'll be perfectly fine on the inside. I have once in a while been able to go on the back with my needle and kind of shove my fabric down underneath that metal and then I'll secure it with another stitch. Getting it into that groove can be a little bit tricky. So you really do just want to take your time. So my best advice on this is to, to go ahead and allow yourself time for this part of the project. I know a lot of times we want to rush through sewing. It's not our favorite thing to do. We'd rather be crocheting. But I promise you taking your time, stitching this to here correctly is well worth it. And then you will actually use it um, throughout time for a really long time. My stitches are really secure on this. I don't worry about putting things in it and having anything come out. Um, it's really nice, especially for keys or your ID or anything like that. If you're out on the go, this would be cute for your ID and, and like keys. Um, it's a really, really pretty project. So keep on stitching all the way around. You'll stitch up this way. The corner can be a little bit tricky, but you're really going to shove that fabric into the corner, smushing it in there and securing it. And then across here, and then we'll be turning and we'll want to do the same starting here. So just keep on working. You will have some extra fabric out here and that's fine. And then you're going to work across here and back down this side. So now that I have all the stitching done, we can see how well this looks and works. It's so much fun. I know the stitching sometimes is a pain if you don't enjoy hand sewing. I don't enjoy hand sewing, so I have just learned to accept the process to get the end result. And it's absolutely gorgeous once you stitch this down. So the last thing we need to do is we still have this side open, which doesn't really make this usable. So we'll want to go ahead and close that side. What I like to do is grab my crochet hook and some yarn. Now you can simply stitch this closed with a yarn needle if you prefer. Um, on this one, I kind of liked the look of just slip stitching the stitches across. So that's what I'm going to do again. So what I will do is I will join my yarn through both sides. So I tend to work in like the front loops only. That way it um, doesn't be too thick. It kind of helps just working in those front loops only. I'm going to tighten my yarn down to join and then working across here, I'm going to grab the front loop from the first stitch, the front loop from the second stitch and simply slip stitch those together. Now, like I said, you can still use um, a needle and 
and thread and yarn if you want simply just to hand stitch this together is completely fine as well or you can slip stitch across here and this is what it will look like and as you slip stitch across here, you'll get to the very end. You'll be working a little bit underneath this hardware. You could always save those last couple stitches by using your yarn needle. So I'm going to go ahead and fasten off here. And for this last tiny little bit, I do want to make sure there aren't any holes, but it is hard to work underneath the hardware. So I'm simply just going to take my yarn needle and finish stitching this small area to make sure that nothing can slip out the bottom of this. And then I can go ahead and weave in all my ends. I hope you enjoyed staking as much as I did. I know it felt like a scary process, but I hope at the end you realize it's not so bad. And then we can get the fabrics we want for different styles of projects. Like I said earlier, staking will happen again down the road for me in a larger project, maybe a cardigan. So it's great to start with something small to build that confidence when it comes to staking. I love these clutches. I think they're absolutely fun. You can use them for lots of different things. It could be an amazing um, hook holder. You could just simply use this to stick your hooks into when you're traveling around. I love it for that. This larger size you can also use for your cell phone, which is a better way to be carrying your cell phone when you're spending time with loved ones because you have it with you you're not going to miss a phone call but it's out of sight in a really gorgeous way i will be using this one a lot and i think i'm going to use this one for my hooks and then that way i can throw it in my bag maybe throw in um, a small pair of scissors and a yarn needle and then everything stays in place when i'm ready to go please uh, hit that subscribe button and join me for some more fun projects soon